I always think that uh, Parkinson's and the medication we take exacerbates certain character traits which we all had before Parkinson's. I used to be a show-off before I had Parkinson's. <laughs> so you can imagine how delighted I was to be asked to be part of a Parkinson's creativity theatre in which I had carte blanche to do whatever I wanted to do. <laughs> so I'll be singing later on, and as you can see, I'm already dancing. <laughs> My Parkinson's began at the age of 26, almost 20 years ago, and to cut a very long story short, I undertook a couple of um, Forrest Gump-like walks, if only life was like a box of chocolates. How good that would that be? I then went on to co-found the Cure Parkinson's Trust in the Parkinson's Movement. For the purpose of, the, of this talk, I thought I'd read an excerpt from my book, book plug, um, which uh, describes a pivotal moment in my life when I was on the second of my two sponsored walks. This was the moment when my life turned around for the better despite Parkinson's. I fished out a carton of juice from my backpack and pulled the straw out of the polythene wrapper. It was a bit fiddly, but I managed. I inserted it in the hole at the top of the carton. My eyes were suddenly drawn to the words printed there, Shake Well Before Use, which is incidentally the name of my book. <laughs> I remembered how the words had hit me so hard on the, first, on, the day, on the day of my diagnosis, how I'd felt doomed to a life of shaking and being of little use. I also remembered how later on I had laughed at the same words, realising that the instruction on the carton of juice was somewhat superfluous given my condition. And now at the end of my walk, they, made, they, meant, they meant something different. Even before Parkinson's, I was doing nothing particularly constructive. Could it be that the words at which I was now looking, shake well before use, were telling me that I had become useful to the world when I had started shaking? I had not even considered the prospect before. Suddenly had a, I had a vision of my future. It was a new take on everything. This was something that I could do with my life, not despite Parkinson's, but because of it. It would be a chance to make a difference, however minuscule, to do something positive, where my Parkinson's would be a help, not a hindrance. I felt lightheaded, and a huge burden seemed to, lift, seemed to be lift from my, lifted from my shoulders. Maybe there were other things I could do. I felt and still, still, still feel strongly that although the cure may, be, may ultimately, ultimately be about money and science, it has to be a momentum to, to galvanise each of these, to ensure the two are brought together in, a, in an effective, coordinated manner, where commercial forces play second fiddle to progress. This driving force has to come from those affected. The push for a cure, the push for a cure will be empowered by public opinion. This is where everyone can help. We can all make a difference. Part of the problem work here was that I felt that most people with Parkinson's preferred to hide. This is such, it is such a visible disease. And that, that Parkinson's groups tended to be think tanks rather than movements. Yet Michael J. Fox's energy had shown what could be done in the States. And we didn't have anything as proactive as, as his organisation in the UK. My mind started whizzing. It was fantastic to feel this enthusiasm coursing, it, coursing through me again. It was another project, something to get my teeth into, which I cared passionately about. In the same way I had felt, in the same way that I had felt at the beginning of this walk, I didn't know which direction I would go. And I knew it would be a long way, but it was something I knew in my heart that was right. I would take on Parkinson's, head to head. I might even win. So it was after this walk that the Cure Parkinson's Trust was founded. It's been through my work with this organisation that has kept me so annoyingly positive and fulfilled over the past eight years. And here I will quote, as I always do, Martha Washington's, George's, George's wife, who said, A great part of our happiness or sadness depends not on our circumstances, but on our disposition. So, so if you have Parkinson's, <laughs> 